on having a community meeting number four with you where we'll come back with more information based off of where we stand with that final schematic design and with a more uh, detailed schedule for you. Again, we'll also be looking to get our MSBA Board of Directors approval to fund the project in October of 2021. So I'm gonna turn it over to our new construction manager for the uh, Welch Elementary School project, which is Consigli Construction. All right, thanks, Christina. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Todd McCabe, and I am the project executive with Consigli. Um, real excited to be here tonight and uh, to be part of the team with, uh, with Doran Whittier and obviously Danisco Design and, and obviously the city. Um, I just wanted to give a quick uh, overview of who Consigli is now that, we're, now that we're on the team. So if you could get up, uh, one slide ahead. A little bit about the company and who we are for those people that, uh, in the community that aren't familiar with us. You know, we've been a, uh, a, a K through 12 academic construction manager for, for many years now and one of the preeminent in New England. Uh, we've been around for 116 years as a family-led company, and we've done uh, projects like this uh, over over 60 projects within this market in Massachusetts alone. So I think one of the uh, one of the big differentiators that bring uh, that Consigli brings uh, to the table here is that we also have uh, 350 self-performed craftspeople. What that means is we self-perform work, so we're real uh, close to the construction. We think that that provides better quality. Um, better control of schedule, better control of pricing, all value that we uh, bring to the table for the city of Peabody on, on the Welch project. Um, my team here today, if we could pop ahead for one, uh, one slide, um, consists of Christy Lyons as our pre-construction manager, and she's, uh, she's on with us tonight. And then Chris Cavanaugh and Andrew Mallion, our project manager and superintendent. This team will work together over the course of the next uh, several months um, to uh, to put the plan in place and to make sure that uh, you know the biggest mile the uh, uh, initial step is is our SD estimating as uh, Christina just mentioned, uh, which we'll be working over uh, on in the next uh, month or so. The, I, we have a, many additional resources here as part of the team that'll be coming in and out um, in pre-construction and into construction. Um, obviously, our plan uh, is isn't fully baked yet. We need to develop it as we learn more about. Uh, the design that uh, Danisco is putting together and more about the existing uh, building. So we look forward to coming back in a, in a few months here at the end of the summer and talking a bit more uh, about our plan and, uh, and have a bit more detail on what that looks like for everyone. I think this is, uh, this is to, to Mike or to Donna. Actually, I think Michelle is going to talk a little bit about how we're going to do this work during construction. So Michelle. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's um, good to be here tonight. As most people know, my name is Michelle. I am the principal of the wonderful Welch Elementary School. And I'm really excited for this project to finally come to fruition. Um, and so is our community. Our, our members are ready, our students are ready, our staff is ready. So some of the options for swing space that we were exploring consisted of looking at a lot of different ideas and taking feedback from family members. The construction on an occupied site will require the location of basically two grade levels. So what we're looking at currently is our current second and third graders we're looking for swing space for. We will be able to accommodate our other students through um, some chess pieces and moving them within the building as the building is constructed. But we're currently looking at our second, our current second and third graders um, to be relocated. Modular classrooms are a non-reimbursable expense. So for us, um, we wanted to make sure that we were using our money appropriately and being able to get reimbursed for the things through MSBA that we most possibly could. So we, we don't necessarily know if that's the best option for us, but we're still exploring things. We're finding alternative swing space within the district so that we can allow those funds to be reallocated to our educational programming needs. And then we're talking more and more about which students and swing space options are available. So as we continue to go through this, we have met with our Welch school families. We discussed potential relocation schools 
And this summer, please accept my phone calls and my emails because I will be reaching out to each individual family. I think we might have lost Michelle for a moment there. Did, and what she's trying to explain to all of you folks out there is that um, this summer she'll be reaching out to you and discussing the school placement for each individual student. And then in August of 2022, when construction is going to begin, then the relocation plan will go into effect and students will be placed in the assigned classrooms. I think you can probably go to the next slide. Okay, thank you. Now the preferred option. That would be. Here we go. That's thank Vivian. You. Thank you, Vivian. Yes. So okay. thank you, Bev. So when we last met in February, we presented the preferred option for the Welch Elementary School renovation. Um, this option which is called R1 Plus, includes code and accessibility upgrades, envelope repairs, and building system replacement. In addition, the building will receive new floor and ceiling finishes, doors and hardware, paint, and renovations to the classrooms. While the majority of the school uh, interior partitions will remain intact, the central administrative core area will be relocated to the front entry area of the school. The interior core will then be renovated to include a new library media center that will be more than 50% larger than the existing library. Next. Great. This preferred option provides educational and operational benefits that will enhance teaching and learning at the Welch Elementary School. These benefits include uh, reconfigured spaces that better serve the school and provides flexibility. Um, we'll be able to use the school year round because we'll have air conditioning. It'll also accommodate developing district wide programs. We'll capture underutilized spaces and we'll look at that in a little bit to use programmatically and we'll be able to support social emotional learning, maintain and enhance the school specific programs. Um, really important is we'll be able to improve security at the school. Um, and will maximize and provide additional storage space and provide some cost effective solutions um, that would really help in operations of the school. And then finally, um, those windows, which is the first thing you see when you drive up to the school, we will be replacing all of those and um, be able to provide some better views <laughs> and natural daylight for the occupied spaces. Diagrammatically, you'll see that the layout of the school really does not change. Um, these yellow arrows show the main circulation for the school. Um, the major change, again, is the relocation of the administrative uh, center core. It moves to the front of the building and the remaining space is renovated to provide a larger media center, a uh, staff work area, and we are actually relocating um, the, the multi-fixture toilet rooms from the outer side of the school where there are valuable window walls to the interior and then providing some programmatic spaces with some windows. Do you want to go next? So again here on the second floor we do the same thing where the uh, toilet rooms are stacked inboard and we provide the offices with natural daylight. Next. So since February, we've been working on the design of the renovations. And as Christina said, we are in the schematic design phase. This is where we check our initial assumptions against physical boundaries of the school and make sure we're meeting the design priorities and programmatic needs. Um, our goal when renovations are complete will to be, we'll have an updated Welch with new finishes, systems and technology that contribute to the well-being of both students and staff. And these are just some of the priorities that we're working with. Next. 
So again, the most significant exterior change to the building will be the update at the window walls of the school. This will affect every classroom. The existing expanses of glass, some of which are failing, will be replaced by a new curtain wall and walls, a solid wall system with punched windows. Next, please. So as we're looking at that exterior, we're looking at different materials and color palettes that we can use to uh, give the school an updated feel. So this first one is the terracotta palette, which picks up on the existing brick material of the school. The, um, that brick pattern that you see on the screen is very similar to what's already on the school. So we're looking at materials that are sympathetic at, that will um, not be too jarring, but will also provide an updated feel to the school. So this one's the terracotta option. Um, next, please. Then we have the green scheme, which picks up on some of the natural uh, greenery from the surrounding landscape on the building. And then next. Finally, the, this scheme is um, use, utilizing lighter materials that feel a little bit um, lighter physically and also in color. We've reviewed all of these options with the school department and at this time there's an agreement that this, the lighter color option um, makes the school feel a little bit brighter. So this is how we're proceeding at this point. But again, we're in schematic design, which is very preliminary phase of design and we'll be going through more iterations of colors and um, looking at how they look on the building and actually where they go. So next, Mike. As an overall elevation, you'll see that the pattern of the school is, um, this is with the, the lighter material scheme uh, where it's a more neutral color, but we're gonna use color to play up uh, window openings and doors and where the main entry is in the center of the drawing that's on the top, you'll see that we're pulling in some of the warmer colors and um, again, being sympathetic to the existing brick materials of the school. Next. These are just some of the initial views that we've developed, which gives you a better feel of what that material might look like. So again, the massing, the shape of the building really doesn't change, but we're looking at how we can infill some of those window walls that will also help us control the sunlight and glare coming in. And um, all the windows will have new shades as well. So again, that's another uh, way we can control the, the sunlight. We will also be uh, including some site improvements primarily to provide accessible paths to the school and throughout the school site. The playground will be repaved and the play areas will receive a new rubberized play surface. We'll be providing um, new curb cuts. So once you enter the school site, the entire site will be accessible for those with disabilities. Next. Okay. So um, the floor plans are being developed further in more detail at this phase, again, to make sure that we're meeting our programmatic needs and um, furniture fits. Uh, we just wanna make sure that what we're designing actually provides a flexibility that's needed to uh, meet all of the different learning and teaching um, styles. So, and we'll get into the classrooms a little bit. So on the second floor, and you'll see that really the partitions do not change. So all of the classrooms stay intact. And the, the major changes, we have a few minor changes with offices, but again, the most significant change is on the first floor with the admin area. And we have been looking at some of the interior finishes and just, um, again, bringing some natural light into some of the interior spaces. Next, Mike. And we just wanted to share some of that with you. So this is, this is the really fun part of design where it starts to become real and we start putting, you know, colors. Again, colors are, colors are components that continue to change. And we won't finalize the colors until much further along down the line, almost at the construction phase, but the colors do help us really visualize what the spaces can look like. We do wanna use some light colors, but colors that are complementary to some of the natural brick that's inside the building. But we also um, wanna bring in some natural wood and some lighter colors within uh, the, the wall surfaces. Um, the corridors primarily will not change in height. Uh, the center area, however, where we're moving the admin to the front does allow us to pop up some of the ceilings. So this is the, a view of the main 
lobby once you come in and you're looking down the corridor towards the gym door there is what you see at the end. Okay, next. The, the best part, well, one of the best part, my favorite part of this project is the ability, ability to redesign a media center. Uh, by enlarging the media center, it really gives us the opportunity to provide so many different pockets of spaces where we can have storytelling cores, we can accommodate two groups, three groups, smaller groups, um, just provides a great amount of flexibility. Um, we will have a, a circulation area that's clearly defined when the kids come in, they could drop their books off in the book drop, they head over to the storytelling corner or they can go to the small group area. This also allows for pull out instruction, one-on-one, -on -one, um, just a great amount of flexibility in the use of this space. So we do have one view of that media center. Again, looking in from the main door. Um, seeing that this portion is in the reconfigured space, we're able to pop up the ceiling in here and again, gain some, some more volume and have some fun with some of the lights. Okay, next. So in the cafeteria, the cafeteria and gym really are not changing significantly, but there is this really rather large wall at the end where the servery is. And um, by changing out the systems for heating and, cool and, and providing cooling, we're able to take out all those wall mounted units and really do something fun with, the, um, with that big large wall. You know, as we walk through the school, we're just so um, impressed and inspired by all of the artwork and um, you know, some of the quotes. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to provide something inspirational for the kids to, to see when they come in. Next. And the classroom. So again, the walls in between the classrooms really stay the same, but we have an opportunity here where we are going to remove those, um, the storage wall at the end, uh, right when you come in, you'll see the storage wall on the backside. Uh, we're gonna create a new storage area that also doubles as a small group teaching area. And then the resulting uh, corner will also have a space for kids to um, use for kind of a calming space if need be, or again, a small group learning space. Next. And here are just a couple of views of the classrooms. Again, this is a view looking out. Oh, can you go back? <laughs> Thank you. Um, a view looking out towards the, the new windows. So again, we'll have some pretty good sized windows on either corner of the classroom flanked uh, by some, uh, some tack surfaces and then smaller windows. So there will be a great amount of natural daylight that will come in, but also a, a better ability to control that light. Next. And here's a view back towards the, uh, the new storage area. So every child will have a cubby inside their classroom with some storage for the teacher up above, um, as well as additional storage along the sides of the classroom. Okay, and next. I'm gonna turn it over, uh, back over to Christina. She's gonna talk about our new website. Yes, so we're happy to show you guys tonight our newly uh, developed building project website. And uh, we're going to click on the link. So the website itself is uh, right. www.welchbuildingproject.com. Um, it might be because you're in presentation mode, Mike, where it's not allowing you to hyperlink it. Um, you might need to just pull it up on a separate screen. Let me see if I can. Hmm. One second, I am working on it. Okay, sorry about that. Just give us one second here. Apologize, I'm not prepared to like not to work there. Okay, can you see that? Oh, we yeah. can, thank you. Uh, so again, the website is welchbuildingproject.com. Uh, when you go to the website, you will see uh, all the information that you would want to see about uh, the, the building project. Uh, you'll, there's a tab about our team itself with a description of who we are and uh, what we do for the project itself. Uh, so that's all of our information that you can find. 
uh, there's a tab uh, back up to the top about the project that provides you uh, with a description about where we are and how we got to where we are today about the, the need for the project itself. Uh, we have some information regarding the design as far as um, some recent, uh, let me scroll down, there we go. Some recent uh, floor plans, this will get regularly updated with the information, including some of the information that we shared with you tonight. Uh, there's information regarding uh, cost, as well as FAQs, the SBC itself, um, calendar with upcoming dates, and there's also a way to contact us. So if there's any time that you go to the uh, project website, you have some questions, please feel free to fill out this information and get in contact with us. And we're happy to uh, get back in touch with you and help you out in any way in any question that you might have regarding the building project. Also happy to say that the website itself is bilingual. We offer it in English, in Spanish, and Portuguese. So uh, great tool for anyone in the community to visit the website if they have any information or want any information regarding the building project itself. And we're really excited to share this with you regarding the building project. So that way we can keep you informed along with every step that we're going through through the process. And I have to say that we are so excited to have that website up and running and ready for folks to look at it and, and really to be able to be engaged with this project. That, that was important for us, uh, just so that all of the members of the public would be able to see the, the pro progress on this project. It moves very rapidly and it will continue to move rapidly as well. Um, yeah. We have the space here for questions and answers from members of the public, if anyone wanted to call in. But before we get to that, I'd just like to give a chance to Mrs. Massa, if she needed to add anything to her uh, her piece of tonight's presentation about the, uh, the swing space and the allocation of um, additional classrooms for our students. I filled in for you, Mrs. Massa, but I want to make sure you're able to say what you had planned on. Thank you. No, I apologize. We, we're having a, a pretty crazy thunderstorm here and uh, I lost power for a brief second. Like it happens almost all the time, every time we have a thunderstorm. So um, I lost everybody for a minute, um, but I'm, but I'm back and it's good. Everything's rolling through. So I, I should be able to, to echo what I think um, Beverly was already saying that you will be hearing from me over the summertime to solidify where your children will be placed um, not net, not this coming school year, but the following school year. So we still have time. Don't stress about it. Don't worry about it. But we will make sure that we are taking care of all of our Welch families to meet your needs so that your children are not displaced and don't feel, you know, like left out in, in, in the cold somewhere. We will take care of everything. So again, you will be hearing from me this summer. Very good. Thanks, Mrs. Massa. Thank you. I hope I didn't freeze with some ugly face on. <laughs> nope, nope, not at all. <laughs> oh. Mike, can you see anybody or um, I don't know whose screen it would come on if there were any calls from the public? I am looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see any hands raised or... No, I don't. Yeah, but, uh, this is Donna. I, I think I would also just like to kind of reach out to everyone who's watching and listening that um, we provided some kind of general ideas and design direction, but we love some feedback if people like it, if they say, you know, have you considered something different? I and mean, now this is part of the reason why we're having these community meetings is really to um, ask for feedback and this is going to be your school especially the neighborhood who will be seeing some hopefully a beautiful transformation of the building we'd love to get some feedback if anyone is wanting to provide any mm -hmm. that's true thanks for bringing that up donna really this is a community project and that's that's a consideration that really drives all of the decisions and all of the progress we're making 
We want to make sure that we keep people informed at every step of the way. And uh, your input is important. That's why we're really happy to have the website. So now if someone has a question, feel free to write in. Uh, you can always give a call to any member of the committee as well. Um, and they can they can get, get you in touch with the person who can give you the answers. Um, we have Ryan Melville and Pete McGinn as our representatives from the city council. And of course, Pete is the ward two uh, counselor. So Pete's aware of everything going on in ward two. And of course he lives in the neighborhood. So feel free to talk to Pete. Ryan as a counselor at large is still very involved with Welch because Ryan graduated from the Welch and is in a butter. So if you see him out in the neighborhood, you're out walking your dog and you see Ryan, go up to him and ask him a question. He's very responsive and he does keep us apprised of the neighborhood concerns. So again, it's, it is important for us to know that you're all part of this project. Yeah, and Bev, we'll make sure that the project website, uh, we'll make sure that that is linked to the district's website as well. So that way people, you know, can get the information from the school district's website regarding the project website. Very good. Yeah, this is exciting. And, and to Vivian and Donna, it is a lot of fun to be able to see the drawings and see the ideas and see colors and, you know, just look at all the things that are going into the decisions. This, this is the fun part of the project. It's almost hard to imagine, right? We're, we're literally reusing the entire building. We're not adding to it. We're not, right? We're just kind of giving it the facelift that it really needs to make it the quality school for these kids yeah it's exciting it really is it, it is it's going to be beautiful and it's going to really work for the 21st century and uh it's going to be a really nice credit to the city of peabody and to all the people working on this project to be able to see this come through it really is going to be a nice nice finished project when it's done and I, th I think some features that we take for granted, Michelle, um, are, you know, you're going to have the appropriate um, electricity and Wi-Fi and you'll be able to be able to, you know, zoom and, and have access to the Internet at all times. And we are minimalists. We're case, very excited about windows and plugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have air conditioning year round. Well, air, air conditioning, conditioning. That will be a plus. <laughs> a plus, especially after last week. Right. So. Yeah, it's um, stuff that we sometimes take for granted and and all these little things will make a big difference to you and your community. Absolutely, and our kids deserve it. Yes, they do. They do. And your staff. <laughs> they deserve it as well. They do. Especially after last week. <laughs> I'm actually able to to view who is online with us. I don't know who's watching on cable, but online, um, we've got a lot of members of our committee here. And I can see folks that I know who are members of the Welsh School family. Um, and I appreciate all of you being here to help with this. Really, really is important to have everyone, uh, you know, being able to participate in many different ways here. So thank you for coming tonight. This is also going to be uh, recorded and it will be rebroadcast and it'll be available. Um, I believe there'll, well, there'll be links. There will be links in our website. You'll be able to see these presentations. So there we go. I don't see any hands raised or any any further you know questions. Uh, would any member of the presenters like to say anything else? Otherwise, I think you can all you can all get back to the drawing board and finish all those things that you're drawing and taking pictures of for us. Well, I just want to reiterate, we're busy, so we're we're busy working and continuously working on the project, and so we're we're really excited to come back at the end of summer to show you you know, the further development of all the things that we we're going to be working on in the next couple of 
of weeks really. So um, reaching out to the community to inform you of uh, the next community meeting at the end of summer. And we hope that you uh, can join. Be a part of that really will be great. Just being able to see the changes as you go along. It, it is amazing to see how rapidly things are moving on this project. And just so people know, the construction, the actual construction will not begin until next year on the last day of school. And the construction management company, one of the first questions they asked, Consigli said, what's your last day of school? And Doran Whittier knew and Denisco Design did. And they explained that it's a half a day and everybody is going to be ready for that half a day. People will be leaving the parking lot with their students to enjoy a nice relaxing summer and all of the construction, all, all of the people who've been working on this project will be there ready to roll about an hour after we all leave the parking lot. That's, it's a really tight schedule and all of this planning is really so that the project can be done as rapidly as possible with the least amount of disruption to the school. And uh, it's very complicated, but it's amazing to hear the discussions that go on when they make those plans, just to make sure that everything going on in that building will continue during the project. A lot of really nice things will be coming up and I know you'll hear more at the end of the Beth, summer. I just wanna make sure everyone's aware. So. Construction is not starting this summer, and I just want to make sure people understand that's next summer. And next summer. Mm -hmm. talking about is just some exploratory work for Consigli to get into the building and really understand the existing systems and what's entailed uh, within the actual building itself. So again, construction is not scheduled to start till next summer. Yeah. Talking about is just doing some exploratory work this summer. Right. If you see people working around the building, it's all in preparation I've, you know, we've all heard the saying, measure twice, cut once. That's what all of these people are doing right now. <laughs> well, I think if there's, if there's nothing further, we can probably end tonight's community meeting and uh, keep everyone in suspense until meeting number four. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. We really do appreciate this. And, uh, we're really lucky we've got a great team working on this project. Thank you all again. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Yeah.